Hey traders, David Frost, My Strategic Forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Tuesday, April 2, 2024. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? Well, let's take a look at the market from the big picture perspective. We'll drill down a little bit. We'll look at both sides of the tape. We're the umpire calling balls and strikes. We will look at the bull and bear perspective. So today, Mrs. Market came into the 20 period moving average, actually missed it by I think one or two pennies, but that's into the 20 period moving average. And they ended up reversing and slowly doing it, but creeped up all the rest of the day in the afternoon, finishing basically at the high of day. We'll take that at face value and we'll call that a touch of the 20 period moving average, ricochet off it above all the moving averages. The trend is your friend. She's still in an uptrend. What are we going to use as the bogey on the downside? Well, we can use the last breakup candle low in the sequence, 515.08. Any daily close below 515.08 which is also below the 20 period moving average. And that will eventually, most likely sooner than later, open the door for the trend line. And as a refresher, let's take a look at where this trend line comes from. We go over to the monthly chart. We squeeze the chart back and we'll see that this was the high from the dot com era, the March of 2000 high. Basically, 24 years ago, you have a pivot here that connects. That was in 2022, 2023, January of 2023. They've broken out above that high. And whether they do it now or later, it doesn't matter. They will come back to run a test of that trend line. Whether or not they stay above doesn't matter. They will come back for a test of the trend line. Back below is a recapture and the bear case for more of a corrective move. Staying above is the bull case for more of a rally situation. Here's the weekly chart. The trend line is important. Taking the bull case into perspective leading into Wednesday, what if they have follow through from this afternoon's rally? Well, the door will open for 522, give or take. 522 brings 523, 523 brings a test to the all-time highs. Not saying tomorrow, just saying if they're up in that neighborhood, they're once again knocking on the door of the all-time high just made the other day. Remember, the trend is your friend until the very end. And write this down, it's hard to kill a bull. They can, they do, they will, but it's hard to kill a bull. What else do we have in the month of April? We've been talking about this for weeks. April is an on-time type of situation. Where does that come from? It comes from time is more important than price. And furthermore, it comes out of the course, Lazy E-Mini Trader. I explain, I show you, I describe how time is more important than price, how we use it to our advantage. Now, back to the month of April. Not only are we looking for a turn in April, which means we're looking for a top, we also have a full solar eclipse next Monday on April 8. Many times, market will trade down or up into these events. Just because we had a dip today, market finished down about six-tenths of 1%. $3.30 in the spiders. That doesn't mean the market will continue down into next Monday. Maybe she trades up into next Monday. Maybe she trades down. Maybe she goes sideways and that complicates things just a touch. What we also know is that, and this is a four hour chart, markets morph from shorter time frames into larger time frames. We get a better picture what's happening without the noise using the larger time frames. For example, a daily chart, a weekly chart, a monthly chart. You get the picture of what the overall pattern and trend of the market is. But we also like to drill down and see where the market is from an intraday perspective. For example, four-hour chart, 
she's now beginning to eat time off the clock after a move down, dropping below the 20 period moving average until or unless she recaptures the 20 period moving average. This is a shorter term bearish situation. Two hour chart, eating time off the clock below the 50 period moving average. Kind of creeped up to pop up above it by the end of the day, but we'll call it creeping using the 20 period or the 50 period, pardon me, moving average as an overhead resistance area. This is a bearish, flaggish kind of situation from the move down, and this is what I'm looking at. You have the close from yesterday, you have a move down, and then all of a sudden you have a flaggish situation going on. That's a bearish pattern type situation, and therefore until or unless they break the chain. Now what does that mean? Break the chain means they're going to start going up into this 20 period moving average. That's no longer the same thing. But tomorrow, if they open up down here, they will be continuing to make a bearish, flaggish type situation on this two-hour chart. When you look at the one-hour chart, it's the same routine, only one positive today by the closing bell is they did get above and close the day above the opening range high. That's not a negative, but yet a positive for the bull case. Doesn't tell you where we're going to open up on Wednesday, but at least from a what is it perspective, taking the market at face value, that can't be a negative. It's a positive. Doesn't mean directly they're going up tomorrow, but to do it by the end of the day was certainly a positive development for the bull case. What about inside the numbers today? Was any money made inside the numbers? And the short answer is yes, there was. The market melted down as we got closer to the opening bell. So the numbers that were put on the board at zero dark 30 really weren't in effect around the opening bell. So let's scroll up. We'll fast forward a little bit and see what we have. 8.42 a.m. That's Eastern Standard Time, long before the market opens for business. Where are they now and what's the deal? Well, 5.19.20, give or take, is important, support, and should bounce the tape. However, and that's if they're below, and they were below by the open, the door opens for a test of 518.40. Well, guess what? They were below 518.40, so we look down to the next number, 517.65 by 907. If below 518.40, 517.65 becomes a target and a support zone. Now, what you'll also see is because we have an expansion in volatility today, we have an expansion of the range, we have to expand our range. So we have an expansion telling folks inside the numbers in the live room, 517.65 down a little bit wider than normal, but down to 515.75 is a zone for a bounce back in the other direction. Let's just take that at face value. Now, we're going to take a look at this zone in a minute, but I want to show you something that showed up later in the notes. 952, 516.45, give or take, is also important. And there you have it. Came up a couple of pennies short, ripped it back up in the other direction, and that, my friends, was the low of day, pretty much within reason, right smack in the middle of the original range put out before this thing got underway today. A lot of traders not in my live room, not inside the numbers with me, not party to anything I've said. However, many traders today were issued a pie in the face. How do I know that? Because many traders will short the market as it's going down early in the morning. And what did they get? They got a market that reversed and grinded up the rest of the day. Hence, pies in face. Traders in the live room got a bounce here, took a base hit, got another bounce here, took a base hit. Some were holding a trailer. They never gave you a reason to sell it, so they were able to ride it up as long as they wanted into the end of the day. Another successful day in the live trading room and inside the numbers. Pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart, and double check the work. It's all in here, all the numbers you need, support, resistance, targets, base hits, all you need is in here to trade in the S&P using SPY options, futures, SPX options, options on futures, ETFs, meaning exchange traded products, whatever you want, it's all in here for the taking each and every day. 
And then, of course, we have some stocks on the move. Today, we had four possibilities. Hood or Robinhood did not hit its entry objective, so therefore, it was off the board. However, we will take a look at the other three, CVS, PVH, and PLTR. CVS Health, no great shakes. They hit the number, they went a little below, they climbed back to Ray right above the number. No harm, no foul, no great shakes. The numbers work. They just hung around the number all day, give or take. PVH Corp, 106.36 was the number. They hit it, they reversed, they provided the base hit. They came back to hover over the number. But base hits put you in the Hall of Fame and therefore were completely comfortable taking base hits you never know which ones are going to provide the rocket ride for the double, triple, Whopper Jr. or Grand Salami. How about Palantir, PLTR, 2188 was the number today. Getting a haircut at the opening bell, came into the number, spiked it, reversed back in the other direction and went up all day long. Traders in the live room got this one. A lot of them got this one inside the numbers, live room. Plenty of money made today in Palantir. It seems to be a trader favorite because it's got volatility and therefore traders like to trade where there is volatility. Volatility creates opportunity. Palantir was a nice winner today. What's going on over in Camp IWM? 20215 is my number. If they're not going to go in the northern direction up to 216, the next objective on the lower side, the downside, the south side or southern lane is 20215. It's a give or take, but that's an area we would normally expect a bounce back in the other direction, at least from an intraday perspective. They gave up the 20 period moving average. That's of note. It's one day. One day doesn't create a pattern or a trend. However, they did give up the 20-period moving average. It's important. We need to know about it. We go over to the weekly chart and we say, well, when we clear up the noise from the daily chart, did anything change in the weekly chart? Well, what we have is, and it's only Tuesday, so take this at face value, we have a reversal week in the making, but there's three days left. We're not going to call it anything until Friday rolls around. As long as they're above all the moving averages on a weekly basis, there's nothing technically wrong with the IWM. Since we're on the weekly chart, we'll go over to the folks down at the transportation department. We still have our weekly bullish box above all the moving averages, but look where they are relative to the 20-period moving average. They're hovering. It's not that the 20-period moving average is support, but we want to know about it as a guideline. They start trading below and staying below it. That's going to be a problem for the bull case. Look what they did today. Convergence of 50 and 20 period moving average on the daily chart. They fought back to stay above by the end of the day. But if they give this up, that's going to be a warning signal. And it's going to open the door for a leg lower. The transports are my favorite canary in the coal mine, second favorite market leading indicator next to Team IWM. We'll go back over there. Let's not forget that was down almost four bucks today, 1.8% relative weakness against the S&P. S&P was only down six tenths of 1%. It's nothing. It's just a down day. But the IWM down 1.8% was a little more than just a down day. Of note, puzzle piece, we put it on the table. Favorite market leading indicator, second favorite in the transports, a number one canary in the coal mine. Transports down over 1% today, 185 points. Again, my two favorite market leading indicators were leading with relative weakness, leading on the downside with relative weakness today. It's of note, it's a puzzle piece, and she's on the table. About the Qs giving up the 20 period moving average, fighting back to it by the end of the day, but not closing above, closing right underneath it. Daily chart is noise. Weekly chart is more important. Above all the moving averages, trend is your friend. And remember what we said, a little bit extended from home base on the weekly chart. Traditionally, she's going to come back toward home base, go sideways for a while, let home base creep up to price. Both those things are true. When you look at what's been going on since... The 26th, the week of the 26th of February, you have one, two, three, four, five, six weeks going sideways, letting home base creep up to price. Think about it for a second. 
will demark it over here. So when this happened, the 20 period moving average was down here. So when the 20 period moving average is down there and I can't even get the tool to work, there she goes. She was more extended from the 20 period moving average than she is now. Look where price is, look where the 20 period moving average is. We talk about it all the time. You can see it in real time. She doesn't like to get too far from home base without coming back for a visit. Down day for the XLF, down 22 cents, half a percent. We're not going to make a federal case out of it. Market goes up, market comes down. But above all the moving averages, there's what? Right. Technically, nothing wrong with the market. Sounds like a broken record, but that's the way we drill it into our head by reviewing the same thing over and over and understanding the nuances, understanding where the changes are and what remains the same. You start to understand the market, understand how she trades, how she works, what she does, and you develop, like I have, a relationship with the S&P. Weekly chart, a little bit far from home base. Yeah, we just talked about this. So is it a wonder she'll correct a little bit, come back toward home base, go sideways, let home base come up the price a little bit? Both those things are true. Both those things are normal. You look at a run like this since October and you say, well, this is a little ridiculous now. Of course, they're going to correct and that it would be true. Of course, they're going to correct. Remember, the month of April, we're looking for a top. We're looking for a turn. Smash Mouth followed suit today down about 1.3%. Still yet eating time off the clock after this move upward. And that's what we have. We have a move from a test of the last breakout area, a move in the northern direction, and this is a bull flag. Now, give up the 20 period moving average, come back down here, break the chain. None of that will matter. But right now, what we do have, we're not worried about what might happen. What we do have is a bullish, flaggish situation that could be building energy for another move higher to run a test in the neighborhood and the vicinity of this breakdown candle high, 235, 236, 237, up in that neighborhood. This is at face value what's happening with Smash Mouth. If I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you, without you, these videos, they're not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're pulling the ripcord here today. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.